Hey guys, welcome to a new video in this Neural Networks and Deep Learning tutorial. In this video here, we're going to talk about e image pre-processing. So we're going to talk about some different kind of uh, methods that we can use for actually like doing image pre-processing before we're passing uh, our images uh, through our neural networks and also before we're doing predictions uh, with our neural network. And then we're going to talk about like why we should use image pre-processing and, and why it's so important. But first of all, remember to join the Discord server. I'll link to it down in the description here and you can jo join our community and we're, you, you can talk with us about like neural networks artificial intelligence, computer vision, and also if you have a, a project where you have some problems, you can go ask questions in there, or if you just want to find some inspiration. You can also be a member of the channel here if you hit the blue, uh, blue button under the video here, and you can help the channel even more than you're currently doing with a small monthly fee. And all of, all of it will go to just improving the quality and the content of this channel here, so just really appreciate the support. So if we start in the carriage documentation here, we know that we go into the carriage API reference uh, documentation here, and then we get these different kind of modules or classes that is already implemented in carriage that we can use. So if we go down to the data pre-processing here, we can see that we get some different kind of options here. So we both have like image data pre-processing that we can do here in carriage, and we also have some time zero data, uh, data pre-processing and some text data pre-processing. And I'll create an another video where we're going to talk about like how we can uh, process uh, like just real numerical data but in this video here we're mainly focusing on like image data pre-processing so let's jump into this tab here so we have some different kind of methods here in data, data e image pre-processing here where we can actually like use uh, both some 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 pro we write ourselves but we can also use some already built in uh, data pre-processing techniques for like for example for the built-in neural networks they, they all have different kind of like pre-processing methods that we can just use so we can actually just use this uh, image data set from directory here where we can specify some different kind of things when we're creating our data set and doing some pre-processing on it. So we can, for example, here specify if we want like what column we want to use and like the labels if we're using like uh, one hot encoding or or sparse uh, categorical classes or something like that. And we can also specify like the class names and stuff like that. But if we just go down here, we can see some different kind of things. We can see a short description of uh, what these things here are. And we can also see some of the other different kind of things here. If you, for example, have a, a pill, uh, pill image, so we have the PIL uh, format here of an image, then we can see like how we can actually like, pr uh, pre-process that image. So we can actually like, load it in and use it for uh, in our actual like convolutional neural networks. So for example, here, if we have a pill image here, we can just call this T at the carriage pre-processing image, load image. And then we need to specify the image path here where we have stored our image that we're going to load in uh, with pill. And then we're actually like going to convert that image to an array so we can actually like do operations and pass that array through our neural network. So we, we use this function here, image to array, to actually like do that where we just pass this image here that we just loaded in up here. And then we'll have this input array here that we can then do different kind of pre-processing techniques on. Like for example here, uh, we just convert a single image here to a batch, but we can also do some other different kind of uh, pre-processing in this step here on this array. Like we could scale it if we want to do that or apply some other different kind of uh, data or like image pre-processing techniques. And then we can just do predictions on that input array that we have processed here by just calling this model.predict. And then we just pass the input array here or the processed uh, input array that we want to do predictions on uh, with our neural network. So we can see that we have some different kind of arguments here. Like if for example, we want to use the column mode grayscale uh, and stuff like that, and also the target size, so the, the, the size of the image uh, and stuff like that. So we have some different kind of uh, methods here to actually like do some data data or like image uh, pre-processing here on the images, depending on the format that we're loading it in. We can also do some um, uh, image array here that we just talked about. And we also have some, uh, an image data generator class that I'm going to show an example on, like how we can actually like use that um, in carriers and load in our own data set. And then we're going to specify some of the parameters here so we can actually like do data augmentation. So if you want to do data augmentation and you don't know what it is and what these different kind of parameters does here, I've created a video about that as well. If, if you're interested in like how we can use data augmentation to, for example, reduce overfitting in, in our neural network, then make sure to check that video out as well. Uh, it's really cool to do data augmentation and also like how we can generate more data than we actually like have in our data set. So if we go into the TensorFlow uh, API documentation here, we also have some different kind of pre-processing method. Like for example, uh, whenever we talk about um, when we talk about the pre-built model that we have here in Keras and TensorFlow, then we need to specify a, a certain like pre-processing input function to that specific neural network that is pre-trained that we want to like uh, do predictions on. So for example here, just an example here, we're going to use the net here. 
and then when we go into uh, into ResNet here, we can first of all we can get like an overview, and then of in, inside here we can see that we want to go into this function here preprocess input because we don't want to know like what preprocess input function do we need to call when we're using the ResNet uh, pre-trained network here. So we see we have this TF carries applications resnet the pre -process input here and then we just specify the data here that we want to pre -process. and then because we specify this resnet here it will actually like pre-process the input um, so it so it's ready to like get passed through the resnet uh, neural network then we can go down here and read like what it actually like does um, and stuff like that when, when we're using this function here um, and we can see that this returns here the images are converted from uh, RGB to PTR. So this is the way that we need to pre-process our images before we're passing it through the ResNet uh, neural network. And all the other different kind of pre-built um, neural network here, like for example, Exception, MobileNet, and stuff like that, like all of these different kind of pre-trained neural networks, they have uh, their own uh, pre-processing -process, uh, pre methods, and we need to specify that before we're passing the images through the already pre-trained uh, uh, neural networks. But if we create our own neural networks, like we can specify our own uh, pre-processing input function and do different kind of stuff where we're scaling our images uh, to, for example, zero and one, or like from minus one to one, and we will do that in the image generator class. So this image here are converted from the images here are converted from RGB to BGR, and then each color channel is zero center with respect to the image net dataset and without scaling. So this means here that we're actually like taking <coughs> taking the mean. Of the of like the the, the image net data set so we're taking the values from image net, the image net data set and we're taking the mean of that and then we're zero sending so the mean uh, from the image net data set would actually like be the zero of our images so we actually like get both negative and positive values where the mean of the, from the image net data set is actually like the zero zero value so we're now going to Google up here and I'm going to show you some different kind of examples on how we can actually like do image preprocessing here in Google Colab with TensorFlow and Keras. Uh, before we're passing into our neural networks. So first of all here, we're going to import the different kind of modules here that we need. So we both need like a NumPy, TensorFlow, uh, Keras here, and we're also going to need some pre-processing and matplotlib so we can actually like display what is going on. So we're going to show the images before we're doing the image pre-processing and then we're going to show them after we have processed our images to see like what is really going on when we are pre-processing our images uh, before they get passed uh, to the neural network. So first of all here, we're just going to import the modules here. So run the plot of code here. And we're going to uh, open up the Google Colab Drive here, so we can actually like import uh, import the images that we have in Google uh, in Google Drive. So if we go down here to our first example, we can actually like do pre-processing with the image generator that we already did uh, in this throughout this tutorial here. Where if we have our own data set and we want to like load in the images um, and do some different kind of data augmentation and stuff like that, we then use the image generator class here where from the, the TensorFlow carries pre-browsing image here and then we use this image gener data generator here that I just showed you um, that I just showed you in the API documentation from Keras. So we can specify some of these different kind of parameters here uh, for our own data set when we when we are loading it in from uh, from our drive or from the directory that we specify. And then we can actually like by ourselves um, define a scaling factor if we, for example we want to scale our images in this case here, we're scaling our images because we're dividing all the pixels with 255. So we want to scale our image from, uh, for example, to, uh, 0 to 255 to 0 to 1. So we rescale all the values or like normalize all the values because when we're operating with neural networks, like the values between like um, either like uh, 0 to 1 or from minus 1 to 1 uh, is better than a range from 0 to 255 uh, when we're operating with neural networks. So this is one way to actually like pre-process our images with this image generator here. And if we just show an example here, for example, if we use this image generator here, and we just specified an, an image down here where we can actually like flow from directory. So we're going to like actually like load, uh, load in an image and we will store the image in this, uh, in this variable here. So if I do this here, we actually like found one image here belong to one classes because so, so if you have a whole data set, we'll have like, for example, like uh, three classes in this case here, and then all of the images from, from each class will be divided into those folders. And then we can actually like find more several images and, and belonging to like several classes here. And then if we print the image uh, image and variable here, we can see that it is just returned like an object from this uh, directory iterator here. But we can actually like use this image uh, image variable here to actually like pass through our neural network. So if we want to like do predictions on a neural network, then we can just specify the model dot predict and then pass this image here to the neural network. And then they will actually like do predictions on that image that we load in from this path here. So another way here, if we're going to do use, for example, um, the pre-trained pre models here from TensorFlow and Keras, 
then we need to specify the exact uh, exact um, exact like pre-processing method that that uh, pre-trained neural network uses. So in the first example here, we're going to see an image of a leaf uh, Lego element here, where we first of all we're going to specify the image path where that image is. So we're going to load in here from the content a G drive, my drive, and then we have a folder called images and a leaf break a JPEG here. And then we can go down here and load in the image as I just showed you in, in the API documentation um, from Keras here as well. And the first argument here you take is the image path here to the, so like path to the image that we're going to load in. And then we specify the target size here. So the dimensions or like the target size of our images uh, that we're going to load this image in as. So in this case here, we just load the image in here and store it in this variable in here. And then we can use map.lib to just display the image and see uh, what's going on. So we just use this plt here dot show and then we just pass the image that we want to, to show here um, in Google Colab and then we just set axis equal to uh, or like axis off here so we don't so we can like see the axis or we just get the image out here um, in this example here. So if I run this blog of code here we can actually see that we're loading the image here and then we just display the original image before we're doing image pre-processing. So we can see the image that we get uh, get up down here uh, so we can actually like, see what is going on here. So we have these different kind of leaf uh, Lego elements here um, on like um, on like a belt here where we take where we take an image and we can see the different kind of uh, Lego elements here on non uh, pre-processed image. So if we go down here and actually like, try to pre-process the image here, then we use this function that we saw from the carrier's API documentation uh, into array. So we just convert our image uh, to an array that we can then do our pre-processing input methods on. So we store the Im image array here in this variable, and then we just pass that here to the TF carriers applications. And then we're going to use the mobile net pre-processing method in this example here that I'm going to show. And then we just call this pre-process input uh, function here and pass in the image array that we want to pre-process uh, with the mobile net pre-processing method. And then this image here, or like this image array here, will be stored in this in variable here. And then we can try to run this blog code here and see uh, what is going on. So we can see that we're clipping input data here to the valid range from imshow uh, with RGB data um, 0 to 1 for floats or 0 to 235 for integers. So we can actually like see that we're clipping the input data. So the, the thing that we actually like display here um, in the image here is not exactly what is what is what is like what it is in 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 the pre um in the pre processed image because we're clipping some of the data because some of some of the values here is actually like a rescale. So for some of these different kind of pre trained uh, pre trained neural networks pre processing techniques, some of the values is actually like scaled uh, to negative values, and we can't really display negative values because. Uh, when we plot our images here, it, ex it expects values between 200, uh, two, uh, 0 and 255 for, for the actual like uh, pixel values. So some of, some of the data inputs here will actually like be clipped and we can't really see uh, what is going on in the image uh, pre-processing uh, like the data technique. But we can see that here that we still get some intuitive understanding of like what is going on when we're actually like pre-processing our input. And we can see in this example here, we can see that we're actually like segmentating out the different kind of objects that we want to, to actually like do something with uh, in our image here. So for example, if we want to detect the Lego elements here um, in the image here, then we can see that we're actually like subtracting or like we're actually like segmentating out or like uh, getting the background away from the object so we get like a better uh, better change from the background to like the actual objects that we're going to do some operations on or like do detections on. So we can see here the different kind of like pre-processing techniques here for the mobile net uh, pre-processing method. So another example here that I'm going to show is a cherry Lego element here. So we're just going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to use another uh, pre-processing technique uh, or like method. And in this case here, we're going to use the ResNet uh, 50 data processing technique technique that I showed you um, in the in the TensorFlow API documentation. So this will actually like several center uh, the values with respect to the image net weight. So we, here again, we will get some negative values so we can really uh, display exactly what is going on in the output. So if I run this blog code here, again, it will just do the exact same thing where we get in the original image here with the cherry Lego elements. And then if we pre-process the image here again and show uh, what is going on, then we can see that we're actually like extracting the background again and we're just segmentating out uh, like the foreground or the objects that we're interested in doing some different kind of operations on or like doing some detection methods on. So in this case here, we're actually like converting it to, to BGR instead of RGB and then we're, we're actually like a zero centering uh, the values here with respect to the image net data set. So we take the mean value from the values of the image net data set and then we use that as a zero. So we'll both get negative and positive values 
uh, as I already said, so we're clipping some of the input data here uh, to a valid range, so we can actually like, show uh, show the image down here. But we can still see that we're doing some pre-processing on our image, and we can see that this is a better image to actually like pass uh, to our neural network than the original image up here because we get like a better understanding of, of like what are the objects of interest and what is the background here that we don't really care uh, about when we pass it through our neural network. So the last example here that I'm going to show is the blue uh, blue square uh, Lego element. So again, we're just doing the exact same things in the two blocks of code here. But in the last example here, we're going to use the DenseNet uh, pre-processing input method here. So this will do some other different kind of things here. And all of these different kind of uh, uh, pre-processing input um, method here, you can go read them in the documentation, what they exactly do, and also what the different kind of methods here uh, returns. So here we can see the blue, uh, blue square uh, Lego elements here uh, that, is, uh, that, that we can now see here uh, in the original image. And then when we pre-process the image here, when we run this blob of code here, we can see that we actually like uh, get some other values here and we again pre-processing our input. Uh, we're doing some different kind of pre-processing uh, methods, but all of these different kind of methods here have in common that they're, they're trying to segmentate out the background. So we only get the objects or like the different kind of features in the images that, that is uh, in our interest because we don't really care about the background and some of the other different kind of stuff that we don't that is not really uh, unique for that image. So we just um, try to segmentate that out and use the optics of interest in our images. And then we use that information uh, to pass through our neural network and do operations on, and then we had like do predictions on it. So all the different kind of pre-processing methods here is actually like just to like either like speed up or like get more precise and accurate uh, models and calculations when we actually like pass it through our neural network. And often the values here are scaled uh, to down to like, for example, minus one uh, to one or from zero to one, because uh, these values are, are easier to operate with when we're doing matrix uh, operations like multiplications and stuff like that, which is really what is going on when, when we're actually like training a neural networks. So this is, this is all I have for you guys about image pre-processing. We're going to talk about like how we can process different kind of numerical data uh, as well. But in this way here, I just wanted to show you like how we can pre-process our own uh, our own images if we have our own data set and we want to do some different kind of techniques and that with the image net uh, or like the image uh, data generator and then i'll show you some different kind of examples um, of like how we can use the pre-trained uh, models um, pre-processing input functions and how that actually like it, uh, what the, what the outputs of those pre-processing techniques are and we can see that they're actually like trying to segmentate out the objects of interest so this is really important when we're training neural networks to get the most uh, or like the best pre-processed uh, input to our neural networks as possible because that will just make the neural network learn faster, it will learn better, we'll get a more precise and accurate model. So thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video here. And also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future because it just really helped me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way and I just really appreciate the support. I'm currently doing a computer vision tutorial in C++ with OMCV. So if you're interested in more different kind of methods on how we can do image pre-processing and some other different kind of techniques on, on how we can actually like do detections and stuff like that uh, of objects in images, make sure to check that tutorial out. I'll link to it up here or else I'll just see you in the next video guys. Bye for now.